In this tutorial on the MD, we're going to be taking a look at the VOR mode. Remember from the first tutorial, there are four different modes on this display here. At the moment, we are in map mode, and as a helping hand, down the bottom here, it says map. This isn't on the real aircraft, and you can elect to turn this off. So I'm going to select the VOR mode now. You'll notice that the display changes, and on it is a magenta line, a couple of indicators here, and a white hollow section here. Notice at the top here uh, there's a point, and at the back here it's flat. So this is the front of this indicator. Also notice that this line is solid magenta, and the tail of it is dashed. Okay, so this is our course indicator. If I just bring up the mode control panel again, notice up here on the top left there's a control for course and if I alter that you'll notice that the course indicator also changes. Now don't get this confused with the the heading indicator. The heading indicator is what the aeroplane will fly to when the heading select button is on. So if I park the heading select indicator on 335 the aircraft will turn and fly a heading of 335. But for this demonstration of the VOR we're going to be looking at course so this is the one we need to use. Okay, I'm going to select the course of 000 and hide the mode control panel. Now notice at the top right hand corner of the, of the display is this strange looking object. Some of you may recognize this as a radio navigation aid called a VOR. That's exactly what they look like. Now these things radiate out frequencies around 360 degrees of a circle and are displayed using this green symbol down here. Now what this means is that when we change the course and we select say a course of 20 degrees we can fly away from this VOR station exactly at 20 degrees. We can also fly to the station. So we're going to have a look at that right now. Just to give you an indication of what's going on, I'm going to put the course back to zero and I'm going to back the aeroplane up. Now you know what the VOR station looks like. So we're going backwards in the aircraft now. The station's getting quite small. There's Sydney Control Tower. Notice on the ND down here that the station is moving away from us. We'll just get back a little bit faster here. Set the aeroplane up a bit. Okay, that's far enough. Now, this station hasn't been tuned. I'm going to select VOR left, and you can see that there is nothing tuned in here. Let's take a look over here at the navigation radio part of the flight management computer. Now, this isn't part of the real aircraft, but it makes life easy for simulation. Down here is the radio button. So if we're on another part of the flight management computer, we press RAD for radio and that brings us up with a number of options for programming uh, the navigation radios. So at the moment NAV1 is tuned to 113.0. decimal zero. I know from local knowledge that Sydney VOR is 112.1. decimal one. So if I type in 112.1 decimal one and I select this key here, NAV1 is now loaded with that frequency and instantly you'll see the VOR display come alive on the navigation display. Down the bottom left here, VOR left still, we now have the Sydney VOR tuned in. It's 3.1 miles from the top of this triangle to the station, so that's 3.1 miles. And up the top here, we also have some more information. We know it's VOR1, it's also on 112.1, and the course we have selected is 000, and again, the DME. This is displayed up here because if you remember from tutorial 1 I can select the ADF down the bottom left here and because this is the VOR display on the ND this is very very relevant information. It's not actually duplicated when I select VOR left here it's because I can have those off and I can choose to display different radio aids. So the aeroplane is heading 360 or 000. Now remember that I said that the radio signals 
radiate from the center of this VOR. Think of it as spokes on a push bike. That's probably the easiest way to describe it. I'll just bring the aeroplane down and I'll get a little bit closer to that navigation aid. You can see down here, there it is hiding under this magenta bar. I'm going to move the aircraft to the left. So the VOR is now in, the, in flight sim about here above the slew word and you can see that this bar here, the course deviation indicator or CDI has moved over to the right. So we can instantly tell that this aeroplane, us, is to the left of the Sydney VOR. If I just increase this display you can see it there. There's the Sydney VOR and this course deviation indicator is telling us that we are to the left. Now I'm going to move the aeroplane to the right now. If you just keep your eyes on the lower screen you'll see the course deviation indicator move through and to the left and you can see that the VOR is off to the left of the nose of the aircraft and the CDI bar is hollow once again. When it's hollow it means it's out of range of these indicators here. So I'm going to bring the aeroplane back to the left now and you'll notice that when the CDI is directly lining up with these two white indicators here we are flying exactly down the spoke of the wheel of the push bike which is zero zero zero. That's the best way to think of it. I'm going to show you that again with VOR left selected. Remember there's a green bearing indicator just up here and again I'll slew the aircraft So you can see that the indicator here, the bearing from the tip of the aeroplane through to the Sydney VOR is lining up with this bearing indicator. Just to prove that I can move the heading bug over the top here. I'll just move it slightly to the left. So this magenta dashed line is actually cutting right through the middle of the Sydney VOR. So very, very uh, useful set of tools on the navigation display to help you fly a nav aid. So I'll just remove the heading indicator now, just back to 320. So what does this all mean then? Well, you're not really going to be flying 360 degrees most of the time. Air traffic control might say fly outbound from the VOR on a heading of 030 degrees, so 30 degrees. So if I bring up the uh, mode control panel and alter the course up here two, three, zero degrees, 30 degrees. You'll notice down here that the indicator has parked itself on the 30 degree line here. I'll just remove the MCP and the CDI is hollow which means that the VOR is not quite in range and so we have to move the aeroplane to the left to bring this bar back on top of the triangle. So I'm going to to slew the aeroplane around to 30 degrees and I'm going to slew the aeroplane left so when there's no forward speed at the moment I'm just slewing it to the left and once again you can see that we are now flying to the Sydney VOR exactly at 0, 3, 0 degrees. Now notice down at the bottom right here it says 2 we can actually fly over the VOR and as we get close the CDI will turn off because we are too close to the VOR and as we pass it it will turn on again. Now notice it's said from so it tell, it's telling us that we are no longer flying to this station we are flying from this station and if you were looking carefully at this green bearing indicator it has also swapped so I'm just going to pull the aeroplane back there we are, we're now pointing to the VOR. If I turn the aeroplane around, say, 90 degrees and move the aeroplane to the left, you can see that we are nowhere near the 030 radial or the, sp or the spoke from the wheel. Now if I turn the course around to 090, you can see that we're almost lined up on the VOR. 
Another way to look at it would be is if I put the bearing indicator, which is this green one at the top, say on 0, 050 0 roughly, I turn the course around, you'll notice that everything lines up when I get the course at uh, roughly 70 degrees here. Now what I can also do is turn the course completely around the other way and the indicator changes to from. Now this is a very confusing part of the VOR system. You can't fly from the VOR heading 90 degrees because it's in front of us so that's an impossibility. This is not a command instrument anymore. So what we have to do if we wish to fly from the VOR on a course of 270 we have to actually turn the aeroplane around which I'll do now and that is now correct. We are now flying away from the station on the 270 radial. This indicator is correct. We can see the tail of the bearing indicator here and that's telling us exactly where we are with relation to that VOR. So I'm going to go ahead and now and get the aeroplane into a reasonable attitude, take it out of slew mode and it's heading lock at the moment. If we take a look at the MCP it says heading select and I'm going to change the course to match the heading. So the heading is 320 and the course is also 320 but the aeroplane is not flying out on the zero on the 320 radial. You'll notice that if it were that the Sydney VOR would be underneath the aircraft pointer here. So if I slew the aeroplane to the right you can see now we are flying exactly on the 320 radial. Now the autopilot system can actually fly the aeroplane for you and this is how it's done. So pay careful attention to this because it is reasonably important. We're going to fly outbound on the 300 radial so we're going to head northwest. Heading is not going to take a part in this so we're going to turn that off. I'm going to turn heading select off. Okay, so now the aeroplane is flying with the uh, pilots controlling the ailerons. You'll notice up here on the mode control panel is a button called VOR localizer. If I press the VOR lock, watch what happens to the aeroplane. It knows that it wants to intercept an outbound course of 300. So it's going to turn 30 degrees past this course to 270. It's going to fly a heading of 270 until it intercepts this line here. You can see the green symbol here, the green tail here. Here comes the CDI. When it gets close, keep an eye on the aircraft or just get the gear up. It will then turn right. So you can see the angle here is 30 degrees. It's now turning right and it's going to intercept the 300 radial outbound. So this VOR symbol will line up through the CDI, through the course indicator and into the tail of the bearing indicator for the VOR. So you don't have to worry about trying to fly it manually yourself. There's an easy way to do it. You simply push the button. Now we're not using uh, the autopilot inside Flight Sim at all, so all of this maths and flying and intercepting is done within the Aerosystem software. We're not using the navigation database inside Flight Sim at all, so any navigation updates can be uh, downloaded from Navigraph and that means that your system is completely up to date.